I'll tell you a very interesting quick story that make you tears, bring tears right. to your eyes. Fairgrounds, when it ceased to exist, they had a thing that my dad and him bought it. I, I've got the papers too, so people are arguing about that. I've got the original thing where Jerry, if Jerry had been in there, they probably said something about it, but he was not in government. And, and me, the, the, the item said, if the fair ever ceases to exist in its present form, the fair association will give this to the people of Lee County. Because this wasn't a city. It was given to the people of Lee County for their use and whatever they want to. Well, the Tupelo somehow, through their deal, I guess supervisors up after Jerry they have something, they went up there and they pulled, I don't know what happened. But the city ended up with it. The city ended up with that thing. So that's, that's one of the stories of these like East people or it's word it's wording and and stuff yeah. like that but it was it's so sad to me because of everything in Tupelo I wish that that fairground was still here the carnival midway offset it and ran all the way up that bottom okay so they went down here and right right where they met in the back the fairgrounds that corner of the ball field I was saying was if this is west, this is east. Yeah. I'd say from from that area, like it, it was sitting like this. That's where and, it was and the ball and the and it was going at an angle, a little bit of an angle. Yeah. So the ticket, the ticket gate was facing north, and you would go in going south. Mm. Had ticket things on both sides, and some out in the middle. They had where you could do those things in it down the side. And then they built up the stage that he came out and formed on was came out of one of the buildings where they had had things for y'all's RCDC programs in the county. They had like they were about sixteen by sixteen squares and they were, and you could set and make a stage out of it. But it hadn't yet had never used it. I remember if they, they might have had something down it. But they brought all those things and they made that stage. Yes. And that stage right there was hadn't it had a back on it, same like. And you went off of the side of the stage going west. You go down and there was a press thing over here. And then they had a private private dressing room right here. And that's why I've got a lot of people of Elvis and I. We're sitting down there talking in this private dressing room, and uh, they, uh, but they had. Uh, I, I think when he interviewed, I don't think he I, he didn't do any interviewing. They just a few photographs. They had a place for the press, radio, born Jack Crystal and that crowd. Maybe they asked him something. I don't know. But uh, so you you hung out with Elvis behind there at that tent. Do what? You hung out with Elvis. Back there behind that yeah. tent. I was. I left the house with him, and in, in the not with him, not with him in the car. I forgotten who was in the car and took the car and went down and came in the back of the tent. Well, and that was your house. So Elvis came, left, left our house. house, my dad's house, and went down the gate. I think came in the back gate. Didn't come in the front gate. So that back road. Oh, that, that back road where his son came in on the back of the side, yeah. and pulled over there, and they had police and everything else, but. Daddy had things. Nobody could go in his dressing room. Nobody. But Daddy had gotten me a, a, a bag, some kind of bag for Colonel Parker. Gave, gave him a bag and said something, family or something. And I had another thing. I mean, I'd just go in where I wanted. You still have a bag? No, no. You said I, you kept everything. So. I, well, I, I, I should have kept that, but I didn't keep So, okay. Keep. So you were back there with Elvis. Like, what, what was he like? That day, I mean, was he excited to be back here? Was he? We're just talking about general things. We had never talked. You know, yeah. I tell you the truth. I mean, I hadn't. You know, I hadn't seen the guy. And, oh, this yeah. was fifty. Late. Six. First time I ever heard. I'll tell you a quick story. First time I ever heard 
Elvis, knew that Elvis Presley was a singer. I can tell you the exact day. Hubert Gaith and I went out west one, some, one time and just to see the west, and we went to Arizona. Yeah. And there was a truck stop. We stopped at a truck stop, and they had Nickelodeons. And Hubert got up. By the way, Hubert was in his class. He's still living in Texas, but he was a member in his classroom class also, not just his class, but he was in, each teacher had so many students in their classroom. They, they just met there and then they went to other, you know, like, yeah, and her name was uh, Ms. Uh, uh, oh my gosh. I think of it, man. I can't thought I'd never forget. But he, hey, he also had a Miss. I want to say Crump, but it's not Crump. It's uh. Well, anyway, I'll think of it in a minute. But anyway, uh, Hubert went up and he turns around and he said, "He's an artist, I take." He said, uh, "Bitsy." I said, "What?" He said, "There's a record in here." You ain't believing who sung this song. And I said, who? He said, Elvis Presley. And I never, I said, we said that time, I said, Elvis Presley. Well, that's not, I'm sure, not the same person. He said, I don't know. And we played it, and I forgot what the song was. We played it two or three times. He said, that's the most, <laughs> said, that guy was in school with us. I said, yeah. I told him he laughed about it. Got back home, and in 1956, he came to the house. Back. Yeah, but that's, uh, it's a funny thing, it had nothing to do, but just last, first time from 48 that I'd even heard of Elvis Presley until 1955. Unbelievable, man. And then there he is out west on the record. And you're like, what in the world? <laughs> well, I walked in the local hangout here with little Joe Malone's cafe. I walked in one night <clears throat> about 10.30, 11 o'clock, Frank Sutherland and some of them are sitting around. And Frank says, hey, hey, Jay, put a nickel in that jukebox and listen to that boy from Tupelo sing. I said, what boy from Tupelo? Well, punch number so-and-so. I put a nickel in it, punched it, it was Elvis Presley. I never heard of him either. But, but that, it's just funny. I can remember one thing. I mean, Hubert, that's the first time he and I had been on a trip by ourselves, you know, 1955. When I, <laughs> but anyway, went on that. But that was unbelievable. Right? Yeah, I mean, some of those. But back to that Colonel, that uh, that time I was touching on Colonel Parker about that stamp. I got a letter in the mail, a brown envelope, and it said, "Joe Bitsy Savory." I don't. I don't think it was Memphis. I think it said Nashville. Nashville. He lived in Nashville. Oh, okay. Well, he said anyway. I still got. It. Both of them never been touched like it. And he rolled on the outside. I just wanted to send this to my friend Joe Bitsy Savory, something like this, and it says Colonel Tom Parker. That is great. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to see this now. You've you, you, you told me so much cool things now. Yeah. But I mean, it's. But then and after. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you this. What he says is the truth. He's. Okay. he's, he's, he's he don't need to gain any popularity by being a friend of Elvis. He's telling you the truth. It's just so great because, you know, his dad, your dad, is so influential in making this happen. That guy right there. That's, that's, that's the same guy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, your hair was curly back then, though. Don't talk about Yeah, that. that curly hair back then. I, I try to comb it forward to cover that bald spot. <laughs> Well, you said you're Brad Pitt these days, right? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you know. And guys, that's Joe Bitsy Savory. Can you uh, find him in this picture with Elvis? Look at him smiling away. I want to say thank you to Mr. Savory for giving me the time and for uh, sharing his stories about this time in his life being around Elvis here in Tupelo, Mississippi. Thanks for watching this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Don't double dribble. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey to stay updated with every new Elvis episode that I upload each Tuesday and special ones here and there. Until next time, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.